Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to uh, St. James Lutheran Church. We're glad that uh, you are with us uh, today. Uh, we want to thank um, uh, Priscilla is off today. We thank uh, Jay Zimmerman uh, for coming and uh, filling in uh, for us uh, today. Jay has to head over to uh, Penn's Valley, um, so we will not have a final hymn. Um, so I know that you go over the flow pretty well, but it'll feel a little different not having a final hymn, and some of you will probably like, yay, no final hymn. <clears throat> so I'm sure you'll be happy. Um, for those who don't know, I started to uh, record and edit um, videos again, um, and I'm trying to get those up, uh, you know, sometime Monday, uh, but YouTube and the internet sometimes don't always go together, so sometimes it may be Tuesday, um, but uh, you can um, continue to look for those uh, online, which uh, I found out this past week again how many people um, are watching those that are not able to come, or maybe they were sick um, and they're able to watch those. So that is a, um, you know, being online is a, a continuing ministry that, um, that I want to try to provide uh, for that. Uh, if you're new with us, uh, please know that everything's found in your bulletin. Um, um, know that we uh, often um, uh, are uh, called up to the table of Holy Communion, and uh, you're welcome to, um, to participate with us. John Bickard has a quick announcement for us. Ah, there we go. Good morning, good morning. Um, in, the, in the bulletin, you notice there's a notice about uh, things in the LOC that are available to anybody. This is in preparation for moving the soup kitchen over to St. James. Uh, we've gone through a lot of closets and uh, different rooms, and one thing and another, and have purged a lot of things that we just don't need anymore. <laughs> and they're located over there in the LOC, so please go there and help yourself. There are a lot of dishes that are marked with tank reserved, so please don't take notes. But anything else out there that, that you would like, that you're welcome to. Uh, and speaking of soup kitchen, we are making progress. Um, we don't have a deadline yet for making the transition over to St. James, but uh, we'll work on the details and uh, we'll let you know when things happen. Thank you. Thanks, John. Well, let us begin our worship with our confession and forgiveness. We stand with you, Lord. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense to your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us with the life of the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen.
Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. She replied, the head of John the Baptizer. 
Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the baptizer on the platter. And the king was deeply grieved. Yet out of his regard for his oaths and for his guests, he did not want to refuse her. And immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in the tomb. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated on tonight's. I mean, children come up for our children's time. Jesus' name, we're not asking to do that. 
But there is something in the midst of this gospel that what is the good news? We have so many characters in, in play here. Uh, I've never seen uh, Game of Thrones, but you can imagine a king who was probably drunk, who was in the midst of things he probably shouldn't have been, and he was convinced by another person, because of their beauty, to be convinced to give John's head on a platter. Now, Amy asked me this week, she, she always likes to put a picture or something on the front of the bulletin. She said, Pastor Brandon, all we have is uh, someone's head on a platter. Should I put that on there? Well, this question only comes up once every three years, so I couldn't remember what we did last time. I said, let's not do that. But then I thought about it. What if you came in today and you saw a picture of someone's head on a platter? Now, we wouldn't think about ever doing that to someone, would we? But how many times do we put somebody's head on a platter? In some ways, we, when we think about them, maybe we post about them, maybe we talk about them behind their backs, because someone upset us, and we are hurt. And in some way, we want to get revenge, we want to act revenge on that person because we have such deep pain within ourselves. And we would be lying to ourselves if we didn't want to put somebody else's head on a platter. And sometimes in our weakness, I don't know if you've ever uh, read the book or uh, the Catholic Church does a really good job about this, but the seven deadly sins, there's a lot of sins out there, but there's, there's seven of them out there that are, are more deadly than others. We see with King Herod that he was a glutton for punishment in the midst of the many sins that he was under. His relationship with John the Baptist seemed to be one that was good. And in this case, John the Baptist was following God's word and saying that, I don't think this relationship is good. I mean, how many times have maybe we've pointed out in our own families that we think maybe this relationship isn't good and they got mad at us? Yes, the, the commandments guide our every way in this life, our morality, because they help us to live a godly life. They help teach us from right and wrong. Because we're not out there to just do whatever we want. Because that's not pleasing to God. And that's not healthy for our neighbor. As a parent, we try to teach our own kids what is right and wrong. We try to do our best knowing that we've messed up a million times on the way. As your pastor, uh, it's thinking about all the times and all the sins that I carry and the things that I think about. Some of the parishioners not here, times that I wish that, man, I want to put their head on a platter because they made me so mad. Nobody here just so wants you to know that. I would be lying as a pastor if we didn't think about those things because we're human and we get mad and people make us upset. Sometimes the things that we say to one another. And I went to you, and I've heard stories of other pastors being here. Maybe you've thought about this with me. That you've thought, man, that pastor's really made me mad today. I'm not going to come back to church. I'm not going to go back to church anymore. Living in God's family is difficult. It is so hard. Because we come from different backgrounds. We come from different ways of life. And we all try to do the right thing. But in the midst of that, that's where the devil gets us. Because Satan likes to use fear. Fear is what the thing that drives evil. Fear is not of God. Fear is of, of, the, of, the, of the evil one that we call Satan. 
So when you come into church and you're, you know, when we feel guilty, we, maybe because we haven't been here in a while or whatever it may be, that is because of the evil one. Jesus doesn't want you to feel guilty. Jesus wants you to feel loved. Coming to church and doing God's will is an act of love of what Jesus has done for us. This beheading of John the Baptist is what we see as a foretaste of Jesus on the cross. That Jesus died for us because Jesus is the one where all the hate was put upon. Jesus was the one who was innocent. Jesus who didn't hate anybody. Jesus who loved everybody. That doesn't mean Jesus didn't get mad because he was also human. We see many times that Jesus gets upset. But Jesus never acted upon his anger. I don't know if you've ever uh, watched, uh, you know, boxing or an, or an MMA fight uh, on TV. Um, there's this um, uh, one guy, Gregor O'Connor, um, who is uh, he must like weigh 130 pounds. I don't know how he I don't know how he does it. But um, when they have these uh, press conferences and they make a ton of money off of hating each other. And they go in and they talk smack and they swear at each other, they, they, they joke about each other's moms and who they've, who they've been with and all this. And then you know what happens after the fight? And all the, when it's all over? They usually end up hugging each other and saying good fight. That's not what God's kingdom is about. 